the Association of Certified Fraud Examiners. Together, reducing fraud worldwide. When I'm doing an audit, I may do an audit that has a scope of work that is proactively looking for indicators of fraud. And that is different than doing a regular audit. An example might be um, in a, you know, in an audit of accounts payable, a disbursements audit. I may be looking to make sure that a purchase order, you know, had been submitted before the goods and services were um, were obtained. I may be looking to make sure that there was some acknowledgement of a receipt, that there was authorization, that you know the invoice actually matched what the check, you know, kind of what the check was. Um, and those things would all tell me, from an audit perspective, that I'm in compliance with policies and procedures. My controls seem to be in place for that particular set of activities. But if I really wanted to flip it and look at um, you know, whether there was potentially fraud in that process, what I may do is do things like look at all my vendors' uh, addresses or you know, telephone numbers or you know, kind of um, the, the um, tax ID numbers, compare it to my employee listing which would be something that I might not normally do in the course of a regular audit. So that would be more of I'm looking for fraud, and I would, that would be more of a um, kind of a proactive set of, of fraud work. Some of the skills that you need to be a good effective auditor are a really healthy degree of skepticism. Um, I think sometimes we do not really, innately as people, we want to believe that people are good. Um, I think it would be a very awful world <laughs> if we believed that everybody around us was bad. We would have a, a, a lot of uh, conspiracy theories and, 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 and all kinds of bad stuff that happens. But the reality is, is that an auditor needs to have a really healthy degree of skepticism. Uh, and, and what that means is that you, know, you build relationships in an organization when, while you're doing your work. And what you need to do is not allow the relationships that you build and the perceptions that you have about people cloud your judgment in terms of how you do and apply your work. So, so being able to compartmentalize your work from the relationships that you build in an organization is really, really important. I think, you know, I, I think the other the other thing I would think about is that, you know, the speed at which the world has changed, that technology has changed, really uh, forces us to think differently about how we do our work. When you think about, and 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 I'll kind of date myself here, but olden days when when um, when records of transactions were kept on paper in file cabinets um, and, and the volume of those transactions wasn't very high, it was always easy to be able to go over to the file cabinet and see the evidence of what you were looking for. In a world now where you know, data is flowing through at a mind-numbing pace through systems and that's how transactions are being handled, people you know, in remote parts of the world, in remote parts of the country, in, the remo in remote parts of your office are you know, kind of having have the ability to uh, to interact with these transactions, it really becomes a space where um, you need to be more um, more able to navigate your way through the data to be able to look for things that, that are that are unusual. The role of data analysis has changed a lot in um, the role of internal audit, and or at least it should have if it hasn't. Um, personally, I'm a data evangelist, so I, I love data analysis and have really, it, it's caused me to rethink and really reshape how I approach all of my work. So in the past, auditors were really constrained um, by not having access or easy access to data. Uh, we, we had to rely on samples in order to test things. Um, I can't remember the last time I sampled something. Um, so, so I, for my shop, um, have invested in data analysis capabilities, and, and we use multiple tools to really accomplish that. Um, one of the, the, the biggest tools that we use is, is a, a product from an organization, I think it's called Caseware Analytics. IDEA was the original tool. I've been using it for years, and um, my team uses it on every audit engagement we do. Um, so what we do is we think about, okay, where are the, you know, we, we're able to look for trends, we're able to look for themes, for anomalies, for things that are the unusual, because that's really what um, data analysis allows you to do. It allows you to corroborate the things that you believe are true, and it allows you to identify those outliers and those things that don't fit the normative pattern of what you'd expect. And then those are the things that you really um, you know, can go after and investigate. And what happens is um, you're more likely to detect fraud when you're looking at a complete 
population of information and you're really being, you're, you're able to also connect dots from disparate sources.